So the water here in Grahamstown has been off. They said it would be back on by two o'clock, but uh, that didn't happen. So I have no water whatsoever. Okay, so it's the 18th of September at half past six in the morning. Um, and the water is on, so. Ooh. And the pressure's good. <laughs> So, yay! So we're just driving around the residential area looking for um, people who have had recent um, water issues and then we're going to take those complaints to the municipality. Um, we have contacted the municipality with regards to previous complaints and known complaints um, but they haven't really answered me in terms of my phone call so later on today I will phone them again. Um, so yeah, we're just going to stop here and speak to these two um, residents. Well, clearly it's a huge inconvenience that we can't have access to potable water. Um, in response to it, basically, because we've had a number of uh, shortages for a long period of time, I have a number of tanks that have been set up. Uh, so I have access to water all the time, but it's just not necessarily potable. And it's not connected to my main water system. So if there are water shortages, basically, I just have to walk up and down stairs with buckets of water to ensure that I've, you know, flushing toilets and have enough water to bath. Um, as it is, I've got water. As you can, I have water running out beneath my house, uh, which we believe is because of municipal leakages. Uh, nothing ever gets done about it, and uh, this has been ongoing three, four years. Complaints. Uh, Requests, nothing ever gets answered, no, nothing ever gets done. And obviously it, it, it affects the house, the value of the house, the stability of the house. We don't really know what's happening underneath it. And nothing ever gets done. So we're just driving to Ian and... Um, uh, Ian and Williams' residence is Darren Holmes. Uh, Ward 12 Council of the DA is currently behind us. And he's going to drive with us to the residence and check out the problem. Darren, he has complained numerous times to the municipality and um, why has nothing been done? Um, I think it's first, it's first important to realise that what the problem is. Um, leaking sewerage is in most, or water for this instance, is in most cases an infrastructural problem. So it's a much deeper rooted problem. Obviously we can fix it um, and then the problem comes back again because it's the actual infrastructure that's the problem. So until we address the aging infrastructure, issues like this will not be solved because it is a long term, it is a bigger problem than an individual residence. And it comes back down to the issue of do we have the finances? Um, we, are in increase, we are in increasing debt as a municipality and infrastructure has been put on hold. Um, we're in the township just looking for people who are willing to speak to us with regards to the water crisis and, um, and get their viewpoint on it and also want to know how they access water, what do they do when there is no water coming out of the taps. In this area, it can be off for the whole night and come in the morning dirty. In other areas, they told us they switch off like Tanji. This is Fingo. So in Tanji, they switch off where my home is. They switch off during the night permanently, and then they bring it in the morning for a certain time. So they close it again. They say they save water, but we don't know which water they are saving because it's dirty anyway. So after speaking to the residents here in Grahamstown, it is clear that there is a lack of clean drinking water for all residents. And because of the situation, there are businesses like Aquapier who provide clean drinking water for the community at your doorstep. So we're going to go have a ride along with them and get a glimpse of what they do. Yeah, 
this is one of the shops here. This is Shalani location. Okay. okay. So I, I, I'm not quite sure how many people stay here, but we have a thousand liter tank inside. I've got about 600 liters of water right now. We're gonna offload it onto a tank. What we usually do, since we have a bucky, it can carry a thousand liters. So we kind of have to fill, then come back again to fit it again. But I can show you guys inside what the tank looks like, and I will fill the tank. Okay, so we pour the water into tanks like these, all right? We gave the tanks to the to the shop owners for free, all right? And basically we fill it up and we charge them, obviously we have to charge them a fee, and they sell to the community at a bit of an increment. And there is no water. I mean, yeah. if, if you can't drink tap water and tar, you can imagine how bad it is. Yeah. Yeah. So. On our way to Dali Mzana, the infrastructure, the director of infrastructure at Makani Municipality. Uh, we're going to interview him now, a sit down interview um, with regards to the water crisis and get an explanation as to why nothing has been fixed for so long. Prior to us recording, you mentioned that there is no water crisis. What makes you say that? Um, it's because um, as a municipality we have been able to provide water to people mm -hmm. um, and the crisis to me it's something that uh, would be in a bigger scale than what is happening here in Makana. I just think that there needs to be a sit down and we need to be very critical and really look at how we supply water to this town and see where the, where the problems lie because they quite clearly are major problems. I mean we can't go anywhere in Gramstown where, the, where you don't see you know, burst water mains or infrastructure in terms of roads being, you know, need urgent repair. The question is, you know, we're paying rates and taxes. What's happening to those rates and taxes? Uh, issues related with water were not necessarily related to drought. They were actually issues that were due to poor maintenance of our, our infrastructure as Makana. But that stage, we have passed through that stage. Um, we've been assisted and our infrastructure has been maintained and everything is almost uh, as good as it's supposed to be. But we don't know where do we get the water and who is responsible to clean water. So how can we pay with dirty water? I mean, a litre of clean water is five months something. My question is how much they are going to charge us with a litre of their dirty water. Look, our water is tested on a monthly basis. We've got four plants here, here in Magana. Okay. It's the James Clean Lance in the east, uh, towards our fort before. We've got the Vineyard up there in the hill. We've got one in 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 Alice Day and we've got one in the biggest. So by law, the Department of Water of Water and Sanitation requires us to test the quality and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the physical characteristics of the water on a monthly basis. And we are required by law to upload those results on our website. And and, and we've been telling the community that they can go to our website and check the, the, the our water quality results and and, 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 and and see. As I told you, I'm drinking I'm drinking the same water. It's our water. And if people choose to, 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 to buy drinking water, then we, can, we can't force them to buy drinking water because it's, it's their choice at the end of the day. In light of Dali's statement, I want to confirm with you that Makani municipality is slacking. Infrastructure in Grahamstown is far from being perfect. Dali mentioned that the water is tested every month from a lab that he would not disclose. He mentions that by law, the water results have to be uploaded on their websites. However, 2017 results have not been released. This is a concerning matter as it leaves questions unanswered. And to give the community some sort of relief and comfort, there are reliable businesses like Aquapia who provide clean drinking water to the community at your doorstep. And thank you for watching. I am Courtney Jeffco.